their podcast in their car. Yeah. So if the sound's not on point, like exactly, yeah. It was pretty shitty. The sound was really bad. I the mean, for it wasn't horrible, but yeah, it wasn't bad. But like, it was like this I mean, is like, like way better nowadays. Everyone's doing their podcast like on Zoom. Yeah. So I think like people don't get the best sound from that. Like you can tell when someone's doing like, exactly. A Zoom yeah. Or whatever. There's like delays and stuff. Yeah, no, exactly. I would never be able to do it on Zoom. So Fuck that. It's good you you're doing it legit. Yeah. What up? This is uh, Enjoy Your Twenty Four, Episode Four, with my man Coach Yoni Yoni Marmostein. It's a little handshake we got right here. Mm. Mm. It is what it is. What up, bro? What up? Chillin', man. How Let's you been? Some, uh, Sandy out. One sec. Oh, Sandy, you have to. Got to Got to Keep it safe. You know? Bonnie Henry, you seeing this? Or not? <laughs> bro, this is. <laughs> What's up, Bonnie? <laughs> Ooh, we're freaking social safe. distancing too right now yeah so. this is legit actually yeah we're, we're at the podcast we wouldn't get in trouble if part. you know some like government official saw this right now or anything hell no bro yeah man covid's fucked though yeah yeah man it's uh yeah. it's tough bro it's tough out there especially in like our field of work yeah you know with like saying? coaching and stuff yeah. yeah yeah for sure Bro, this is like we're in the midst of a second wave apparently because like since Friday there has been 499 cases. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, the rest of the world seems like they've had that second wave come on. So it's like it seems like especially because it's like winter and all that, that it would happen here. But yeah, kind of like I said, like I, 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 I try to just keep my tunnel vision. Exactly. Yeah. Keep myself safe, my people like that I train or yeah, yeah, yeah. family or whatever. But like. I try not to go too deep into the numbers because that shit will freak you out. Yeah, exactly. Like, There's so much like scare and like scaremongering in the news, man. My cousin's man. in Australia though. He, they've been on a full-on lockdown in Melbourne for ten weeks with his, and he's home with like a one and a half year old. Right now. Yeah, they've been literally on lockdown for like three months of like an intense lockdown. Damn. Just the two of them and their baby in the house. That's crazy, dude. Like one of the, like I t- actually talked to my buddy from Paris. Uh, like about a week ago, I FaceTimed him and he said he got Corona about two weeks ago. Oh, really? And dude, he basically said the first three days is like, you want to die. Really? It's like, this is how I'm going. Oh, really? It's basically what he, the way he described it is you get a stupid fever, but you can't fall asleep. So like when you, you know, when you usually get a fever, you like, you end up falling asleep after like a couple hours like yeah, you're yeah. just so fucking tired you're so over it and your body's like heating up you just fall asleep yeah. with this like you don't fall asleep you just like how fucking old, how old is he he's like 30 31 <laughs> so, so and like he's like you know a relatively relatively healthy guy you know he yeah. does all the precautions needed so yeah, yeah man so scary time. with covid you're you know coaching obviously that's your thing you mentor kids you uh, you know, train them and all that. So, like, how was that going for you? And, like, you know, how's... Yeah, I mean, when it first hit, like, it was March. I had a lot of stuff planned for, like, spring break. I was going to run a camp on Salt Spring, camp in North Van, and then also help with another club's camp. So I was going to be doing three camps in those two weeks and had, like, so much stuff going on. Just ordered these shirts and, like, my gear. You these know? are all work, no luck. <laughs> Copy your mo- merch. <laughs> yeah, you know. I already got a t-shirt. That's yeah. tough. I like that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I was just starting to build something. Like, I feel like starting to, like, kind of brand it a little bit and just do a little more. Uh, and it's the same with everyone. Every type of business you can think of, I think, like, got hit by this. So we just put everything on hold and then... Uh, you know, in the summer, slowly started getting back into it. We had people coming to our house. Uh, me and my roommate are both basketball coaches, mm. and personal trainers and stuff like that. So we had people like coming into the driveway. We had to have one in the driveway. I'd be teaching them shooting mm. and he'd be in the backyard with them doing like a strength and conditioning workout. Right. And then they would like sw- switch. So we just like had that going on yeah. for like a few months. And then uh, that's fucking dope, yeah. man. I don't know. It's just, it's so, it's so tough for kids that are in their last year of high school. And, um, especially for those, for those kids that haven't had that exposure and that like recruitment and, um, you know, they haven't been a household name for like, since like grade 10 or 11. So they really had to like use this last year to, um, you know, boost their basically market value. And that just sucks, dude. That fucking like, I don't know. How do you like, as a coach, like, what do you, you know, cause coaches are obviously like, like, you know, aware of that where 
there might never be a season yeah. for like a high school season so they gotta like yeah. um find out about players other way like what yeah. how do you like what do you tell your kids right now if they don't have a season like what do you tell them i mean it's tough right like those kids like you said like and you remember your grade 12 season that's like you you work your whole fucking like high school everything just to get to that year and i definitely have a few guys that like i feel like you know we're gonna have a big grade 12 year that no one's like that they were kind of like last guy off the bench a lot of the time just mm. hustling and grinding and and this was kind of their big year i feel like shout out to kai <laughs> <laughs> a few other people, kai gary baby a few other people uh you know that i think we're gonna have a good grade 12 season and that's gonna make them able to play college and all that so right it's definitely tough but i think like the main thing is just staying ready like whatever opportunities like there's gonna be a time when this all goes away and like when it does you know there's going to be a lot of people that were chilling so like this mm. is like such a good opportunity if i was like really trying to hoop right now it's just like this is this is the time when you can start to catch your competition and get ahead of people because there's no way people are grinding as hard as they did when the, it was easy to get in a gym mm. or things were just kind of come easy to you you know you have a, you have your high school team you have your trainer you have your club season you have all this stuff just like it's so it's so much easier to train but right now it's like tough so like i think if you're really like serious about it this is a really like really an opportunity to kind of get ahead of people that were ahead of mm. you you know what i mean so this is actually so, like a busting this guys for a lot of kids i think it can almost. be like obviously if you lose your grade 12 season it's it's really tough but i also think like it depends what level you're at you know like d1 and like the the, the highest levels they're obviously going to be recruiting people like it's you can't just like walk on to a d1 team for the most part but in this area it's just like if you're good enough you can get a spot you know what i mean in mm, a college or right. a university if you're good enough so like it's just about getting to that level skill wise mm. and game wise and then i think when there's no no high school season if there isn't a high school season um you know trying to get to get game reps through club and trying to get your highlights or trying to get like some game film to show mm, people right coaches i think i think college coaches around here are going to go to a lot of the club you know tournaments and stuff like right that. yeah so you know what's crazy kind of take over. i'll uh i'll um say one thing for i actually went to i remember this was like th three years ago i went to a random open gym run at uh mickey mcdougall in north yeah, van yeah right just like a random fucking night i was like why not let's just go play and i played with a few kids there and like, we were playing like three on three four on four and one of them was like uh he was a senior in high school from uh i won't say what high school i won't say any names but dude i literally he was like a six seven six eight wing player and he was yeah. playing and like we we're playing literally three on three and i was like okay yeah. this guy can move you know That's what nice. i mean like he's yeah. he's not bad he can shoot you know he's a versatile big guy and i ended up uh because um coach cassidy from cap yeah. uh he recruits a lot out of north fan and i i was still playing i don't know if i was playing still at cap but anyways i i just told yo Cass like there's a kid you should look at he goes to this school yeah. this is his name and then he ended up actually yeah. signing him so i like to take credit for that That's if you guys didn't know i the, the person low that key recruiter yeah basically <laughs> low-key recruiter but yeah man i don't know it's just what school you can give me the school I for what high school who this was yeah argyle yeah i'll tell you after right, but if you know who it is then yeah but yeah man i mean it's a weird time for a lot of people and uh just the nba season being over it's a fucking it's boring man my lakers baby <laughs> but yeah i think that's a, that's a good point just like you never know like who's who's watching and stuff like that like yeah there's there's some kids that you know, work, they come to the, I, I work at the North Van Basketball Academy. So it's like, instead of a gym class, it's a basketball class, basically. So during school hours, they get to play basketball. Uh, and there's certain guys that like, you know, don't take it that seriously because it's just every day they're doing the same thing and they mm. just go through the motions. And then they get into the games and they do the same thing. Like the, your, your habits that you create when you practice kind of show up in your game. Mm. So some guys are just coasting. And some guys go hard like all the time, and it's just like you never know like who's watching you. Exactly, yeah. And, like I'll talk to college coaches sometimes, and sometimes like I'll post someone on Instagram, and I'll have college coaches like 
messaging me on Instagram saying like, oh, mm, who is this wow. kid and stuff like that. So like, it's crazy to me, like, because I didn't know this college coach even like follows me or whatever, but like, y- you just never know who's watching you. And I think like, exactly those, those like little things, like all, college coaches are like looking for all right, yeah. So like, if you really want to play at the next level, it's interesting you, you say that because when I was playing with that kid that during that open gym, I remember his buddies were sort of just like lacking and joking around, yeah. but he was like, yeah, you know, going hard, wanting to win. And when yeah. he did lose, he like you know got pissed off. Yeah, so that like really that what that's what really stuck in my head. Other than the fact that he can like you yeah. know do some things, and I saw the he's like a dog. exactly yeah. you know what I mean. I saw the potential of how he could be after yeah. two two three years yeah. in like a system, you know. Yeah, so that's actually really cool. With, like think about because i didn't actually think about you don't know who's watching yeah Yeah. and i think like college like i could i i used to make the the mixtapes and everything i still do but like when i'm videoing a guy i can i can pretty much tell like pretty quickly like what kind of player they are like Mm. how their attitude is and how they're how they're like that dog mentality is like Mm. are they going hard on defense every time and like i feel like college coaches should look more at that stuff like like when i was in grade 12 I like wanted it so bad to like play basketball. I just wanted to like play mm-hmm. as much as long as I could, like at the next level, everything. But like when I went to college tryouts, I, I didn't get looked at because of my height. Mm-hmm. So like, but like no college coach was kind of trying to get to know me. You know what I mean? Not that they owe that to me, but I just feel like the more you can get to know the kid, the more you'll see, is this kid going to work his ass off every day trying right. to get better? Mm-hmm. Or is he going to kind of, just coast and 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 he might be good now but he's not going to get right any better, yeah you know I mean? it gets it definitely gets your foot in the door to yeah you know maybe get a tryout or yeah. be invited to the open runs because i know a lot of kids um you know they they're sort of on the edge yeah. but just based off of like you know how they are in school their work ethic personality they do get invited to the yeah you know the runs and then in the runs you got to show out right yeah. so at least like you know if you want to like if you're not like he- like heavily recruited at high school like yeah. just getting that look and like being invited to runs being yeah. invited to you know the practices and yeah. stuff like that it's huge man yeah for sure and even if you like don't aren't that good at the runs like talking communicating with the coach i used to be so scared of like talking to coaches mm. but like communicating with them and like basically letting him know like i'll do whatever it takes like i'll i'll, I'll work my ass off i'll redshirt for a year or whatever you, right. whatever you need me to do like it just get me on the team exactly like, there's a lot of guys i think that i i just like coach that kind of gravitate towards me because of my story and it's kind of people that are kind of on the cusp you know what i mean like right. i was always kind of like on the cusp of being like uh where i wanted to be in basketball and all that and i think like the, a lot of the kids I train are the same way. They're either like, you know, trying to crack a starting lineup or trying to uh, crack the college team or whatever the case is. And I feel like that's, those are some of the things that like hmm. I didn't do all the time, but I can like definitely pass on to the next right. generation. And I'm, it's crazy, man. Like a lot of kids that like, I've seen people that have gone red shirt spots on a team, yeah. but haven't taken it. Cause it's just sort of like exactly. their ego. Like, Oh, I don't want to, you know, be a red shirt. I don't want to practice and You're just. Truly right here, man. Yeah, man. I, I, like, I was a red shirt guy. Cause like the first year at Cap, right? They, I think they, they offered us both red shirt spots. Yeah, yeah. And then I think you just sat out the year. And then I remember talking to you about it at some point, and you were like, "Oh fuck, I wish I kind of." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like at least I'd be in the gym, like hooping with the team. Exactly. Yeah. And then I end up going back. I got a red shirt spot, and then I end up be on the team. You know and what you, I mean? And you got you got on the team right away, right? Like that season. Like yep, that re- season, right? So it was me and another guy, and then it would be me and him that got their roster spots. Yeah. And then uh, a lot of people don't know, man. Like, yeah. there's every during a like a season, people man. Drop s- s- people drop out, people yeah. fail. Yeah. I guarantee you, there is going to be one or two people that fail. It's yeah. just, it's just how it is. Facts. Which yeah. is like, you know, it's like it's yeah, fucked up. Especially at the college, I don't know how much at CIS, but definitely at the Pac West level, I feel like oh, there's a few spots every yeah, year yeah. open up. And like, if you're willing to redshirt, even even if you do it, like there was like Nico. I, 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 oh I, yeah, I yeah, shout out Nico, man. Like, He's my Nico, teammate for two years. Nico's the man, bro. Like the year, it was a year after I had redshirted for Cap, and then he came in. He got cut a hundred percent from the team. Like he didn't get a redshirt spot even, and he went to the coach and he said. Like, yo, what can I do to, like, make the team next year? Like, what what could I improve on? Stuff like that. And the coach was like, 
you know, just come to the summer workouts and stuff with our team. He came to the summer workout every single time. Like me and him were probably the only two that were there like every time. And then by the season, like a few people dropped out, I guess, whatever happened. I was one of them actually. But by this time the season started, I think he had a roster spot. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> or a red shirt. I think his roster by the first season. And, and then, and they became captain like yeah. four played five years, right? Four or five years. Played four years, yeah. 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 And then he was like a starter a lot of times. Yeah, yeah. He, he had a pretty like, good career. He became the captain of the team. Yeah, he was captain, yeah. yeah that's shit. crazy. It's crazy to think. Yeah, yeah man. So one thing I really want to get into is I've been talking to my, you know, I've been I've talked to a lot of my buddies about it, yeah. is the NBA bubble. Yeah. Man, I think a lot of, uh, you know, like, I mean, Damian Lillard always, like, popped off. Like, he was always, like, a killer. But yeah. people like Jamal Murray... Um, you know, Donovan Mitchell yeah. even. Yeah. Who's that guy in Indiana? Do you remember? Oh yeah. During the um, season? TJ Warren. Yeah, TJ Warren, yeah. Bro, I think one of the biggest things for the bubble and why these guys popped off so and just played so well is because there's no none of that distraction, you know what I yeah. mean? The fans. Yeah. Um just uh, you know, just like a it's it was just like an open gym basically. Yeah, facts. And I feel like a lot of them took that advantage and yeah. enhanced their game. I think it, I think it works it both ways though. Like I think there's definitely a lot of guys that like just go like I think like a TJ Warren. I I don't know him, so I'm not gonna like talk shit. But like uh, like you know no no offense, but like I feel like with no fans, there's just so much less pressure. And there's mm-hmm. certain guys that thrive when there's nobody like you know a bunch of like thousands of people watching them they're just going to play better because there's less you know added pressure like obviously they know the world's watching and stuff like that and there's a lot riding on these games but i think a lot of guys play better but then i also think there's guys that play worse because they don't have that like you know motivation that you get from the fans like a yeah, lot yeah. of like fucking hypeness comes from yeah, that. Exactly. And, like, a lot of guys i think you see like who has that like inner dog like who's gonna really like go without like a thousand fans like right, yeah you know what i mean well like, my thing is would jamal murray be going off like that Bro. in a real stadium though that's and the was, thing you know what i mean he kind of was though like he was still nice before, he was still nice but he but went he, crazy he went absolutely berserk <laughs> he it was, was so fucked good. when i was watching i'm like holy fuck this guy literally is the best basketball level. player i've ever seen uh, same, <laughs> like he couldn't miss yeah the shots he was hitting and just everything he was doing with like so few mistakes i think he was the best player in the bubble I think, I think like so. for yeah. sure easily at yeah. some at, at that at that point like in the playoffs just going off and Donovan Mitchell was giving it to him yeah and he took it like Donovan Mitchell too like kind of did the same thing but but Murray took it to another level like, right it yeah. was crazy I just that was, think, that was dope to watch I just think the bubble had a lot to do with it to be honest I, I'm not taking away anything from like yeah. their skill or like how, what they are but to go to that level it's like yeah i think it has to do a lot with like yeah. the different variables well you know how it is like you go to an open run and you just kill you oh dude off, and then you get I to like your, like the your college team games or practices or or whatever higher levels and you you're like you're never gonna play as well as you do it at like a scrimmage or an open exactly, run without yeah. people watching i think so i think right. like I I I can see that for sure. Right. Like, those, these players are like I, I feel like if you saw like J- Mer- Jamal Murray or like any of these guys, any NBA player pretty much had an open run. Like I saw oh, yeah. like highlights of Danny Green, who you think of just the shooter. Yeah. He's at these highlights of the C Brickley runs, and he's like putting like dribble moves on people, like yeah. step back threes, <laughs> like doing everything. And I'm like, man, yeah. these guys can hoop. Like like yeah, if yeah. they go to like any any other setting, but guys also like Danny Green or like uh PJ Tucker and guys like that like they get paid millions of dollars just to catch and shoot so exactly, they're yeah. going to obviously do that most of the time but if you get, if you if you put PJ Tucker in an open gym setting he'll fucking beat you <laughs> off the dribble he'll step kill you back off the dribble for sure freaking he'll, he'll be in his bag you know i think so that's just that's just the like just the nba caliber player man i've had a lot of like hot takes with uh my buddies and talking about okay well if you put Quinn Cook on like a pack west team would they <laughs> would they you know, would they beat ubc or like would they be are you serious well, yeah i'm being serious are you saying that he they they might not dude if quinn you put cook Qu- if you put he's quinn so cook, nice okay here's my thing if you, you don't put, like quinn cook i know i think he's nasty i think he, dude he, went, he was a duke guy he was a freak yeah. he was the best player on duke when they won that national championship yeah. i'm just saying if you put quinn i'm gonna ask you this if you put quinn cook on a pack west team 
Yes. Choose whatever Pacwas team. They win. Yeah. Will they beat? Yes. Will they win CIS nationals? Nationals. Yes. Uh, it depends what <laughs> if you put it with, if, you, if you put it with like four players that don't know how to play basketball. Okay, I'll time. give you. I'll give you four players. But, but you can give me four. I'll give you four go. players. Uh. Martin Bogayev. Oh my god, very good. Name names. Yeah. Reese Morris. This is, this is my squad. I know. Um, who's the third guy? Let's say Nico. Dude, you already are winning. I don't care who else you got there. And <laughs> those guys and are good. And me. <laughs> oh, okay, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> nah, bro. I mean, and you put Quinn Cook, yeah, Quinn Cook in that they're, mix? They're, they're, you're all good. Like, you know what I mean? You can all play. I feel like Quinn Cook is going to make it happen. I just feel like he's on, like, he's, he might be underrated in the NBA, but if you ever, if you, whenever he gets, like, the opportunities, I feel like he's going off. He's oh, yeah, so yeah. nice. He's, he's nasty, doing, like, yeah. a lot. He's got a bag. Right. And I feel like that is kind of an insult to him because he's going to probably, I feel like he's just so on a whole nother level than, Okay. CIS players. It's just, it's just. I don't know who's he gonna guard though. You know what I mean? <laughs> Who, he's only like six. How, how tall is he? Like he's six feet, as, six one. He's probably as tall as like most of the shooting guards. So he'll guard. Quinn him. Cook. Yeah, like, bro. He's like six feet. He's taller than you and Marty. <laughs> so true. So he's gonna be playing the three. Yeah, but is he go, is he gonna guard? Uh, <laughs> he's gonna be guarding the three. <laughs> is he gonna be guarding like when Connor Morgan was in CIS? Would he be? Could he guard Connor Morgan? I don't no, think so. No. Yeah, there you go. Connor's Con- a pro. Yeah, Connor's he's a like, bucket. What, six, yeah. yeah, he's like 6'9", six, 6'10". Six, and you got who? You got Reese and Nico. So they're, they're obviously going to guard the bigs, and they're not that big. So I see what you're saying. Yeah. But anyways. You got one shooter. I mean, Reese was a shooter in high school, but I love you, Reese. <laughs> That's my boy, but... <laughs> he said you weren't going to name names. That's hilarious. <laughs> no, he, he doesn't care. He knows I'm going to talk about him. He's how, totally fine with it. How hyped were you about the Lakers? Man, year? it was... What did you do? Ah, <sighs> shit. I've always, okay, man, like, people, when they say, oh, you, Mo, you've never been a Lakers fan, I've always been a Lakers fan. I don't care what it, I don't care what anyone says. I became a fan once I started watching Kobe, and, um, man, they're just, I per, I for personally think we got very lucky with the Clippers yeah, getting knocked out. I agree. Because, bro, I'm not going to lie to you, I was really fucking nervous about that. Yeah. I was really nervous about that. And, I agree with that, for sure. Um... It's just a bad matchup for them, you know. Like they had so many scores. The Clippers versus the Lakers. Clippers versus Lakers. I, I think yeah. that would have been a really crazy good series. I I don't know which way it would have went because the fact that the Clippers couldn't figure it out to beat Denver was was pretty surprising, mm. right? So I think like Clippers have everything they need, but they just haven't figured out how to work together. Like Kawhi was like a different beast in Toronto because he knew every single time he's taking the shot. Like they the whole fucking other team everyone on his team were giving him the ball they're like go to go to work like fourth quarter but now he's in a situation where it's like you got pg you got lou will who are both like bona fide scorers mm. and so anytime he's not like you know like open or has his thing going he's gonna give the ball up and he's just you could tell he was like i feel like he struggled a bit with that role like should i shoot or should i pass yeah. like at the end of the game and stuff like that and then you know what i mean i yeah. feel like they just they didn't have the chemistry that I think they'll figure it out. Mm-hmm. And I, did they fire? They fired their coach, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. Doc Rivers is out. Yeah. So I don't know who their new coach is, but I feel like they just have to work, play together. Yeah. I think next year is going to be tough to beat them. I just think if uh, they I don't stay know. Together. Well, the thing was a lot of. But they did lose. Yeah, so. I mean the load management really, I think fucked them over a little bit because they didn't. They, they yeah. You know, they Kawhi sitting out so much. Enough. They you yeah. know didn't get to like yeah. maximize that chemistry. Exactly. Um. A lot of the players have come out recently to say that, like, because of load management, like the treatment Kawhi was getting, it kind of rubbed yeah. the other players off the wrong way. It's like, yeah. you know, just you got a lot of like dogs yeah, on the team. Yeah, that, like a lot of you them. Know yeah, what I mean, so like they they're probably not super stoked about Kawhi sitting out, and yeah. you know, it's all there's so much that happens behind the scene that we don't see that goes into winning a championship. Right. And like, if you lose anything, it's just like I feel like these other teams are so such a high level. I, I definitely picked Clippers to win this year before. And then once they were out, it was like yeah, perfect for Lakers, the Lakers. Yeah. LeBron's story is going to be so If you better. look at it from top to bottom, the Clippers had the most talent easily. Yeah, like agree. if you yeah. you would you could see it was 
like if you made a top 10, like if the yeah. Lakers and the Clippers played in that series, yeah. if you made a top 10 players list, yeah. it would be LeBron, AD, or I mean, you could even say LeBron, Kawhi, yeah. AD, Facts. Paul George, and then yeah. from 8 to 10 or 7 to 10, it would be yeah. Clipper players, Lou right? Well, Tre- Montrez, Harrell. Montrez, I mean, Lou. Yeah. But like Lou, like for example, went from scoring probably what like twenty a game to like ten or something. Like he, I don't know exactly his average, but like I feel like he had to step real back. Yeah, right, a lot because he was like the main scorer before PG and Kawhi came, and he was coming off the bench. Right. So it's like you got your guy who was getting big buckets and everything going to being the third option, <laughs> and mm. he's like a fucking pure scorer, mm. and then. I don't know. It's just like they almost have too much. Like they have so much scoring. They have so much good like dogs on defense. They can all play defense. So I think like it just seemed like they were like the the mm-hmm. runaway team. Yeah, to win, defensively they were. They just couldn't figure really it out good, yeah. together on offense. I think. Yeah. Lakers perimeter like defense Lakers was elite defense in the finals. Nuts. Elite, yeah. bro. That's that's what really put them over the yeah. over the top. And that was cool to see. Like LeBron. What was crazy about LeBron? I feel like was. You know, like Jamal Murray, like whenever Jamal was going off, he was like, let me, let me guard him. And he would right. guard him. Like the last like five he fouled minutes. Him, that bro. He, he definitely fucking fouled him. <laughs> what, LeBron like, knows he fouled him on one of the one takes. Play. Yeah. I mean, and, like, like, like on one play or like, like throughout. On one of the plays. Yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. He like fully fucking slapped his hand. Yeah. And like the analysts and like the reporters won't say anything because it's LeBron. Yeah. And I won't say anything. I was like, you yeah, fucking. <laughs> but in my head, I, it was full on fucking hack. But that's but. like one play. I mean, I, f- I feel like he guarded him for like four minutes at the end of a game. That was like yeah, super yeah. important minutes. And then, and then he kind of did the same thing with Jimmy. The, Jimmy went off one game. The next game, he starts guarding him pretty much. Like, I feel like he guarded him the whole game and just kind of slowed him down a lot. So, right. like, it's, it's, it's just dope to see, like, LeBron just has that, like, inner, you can see, like, how much he knows this means to to him, the Lakers, everything. It's right. just, like, he has that drive to, yeah. like, go. Just, like, him just, like, you know, standing in front of the player just, like, intimidates the yeah, other guy. You know right. what I mean? He doesn't really even have to, like, move his feet. He doesn't yeah. really have to cut him off. Yeah. The player just sort of... Murray, like, didn't do... Yeah, like, just I, become a little I, passive, you know? A bit more passive, yeah, yeah. For sure. Man, but yeah, man, it was great. It was great to see him win. It was, you know, his fourth championship. I think for the Lakers, if they want to repeat, they have to get shooters around LeBron because yeah. Danny Green is garbage. <laughs> um, he's not garbage, but uh, he's definitely not a very good basketball player at this point <laughs> in his career. <laughs> at his career. Um, no comment. Bro. I mean... Who else? I mean, they got to get... I mean, Kuzma, they actually signed a petition. Kuzma can't shoot. Oh, no, Kuzma can shoot. Uh, I think of... Uh, KCP? KCP no, actually KCP played well. Shoot. I actually like KCP now, but he's like the opting out of his okay. con. The, the GOAT. Oh, yeah, Caruso. The Caruso, baby. He's not a shooter, though. He can't shoot. Yeah, he's like more he of a defender. Really good for them, though. He was really good, but You're yeah. right. Like, they could use a sh- some more shooters. That's, your, that's what you really need, bro. Like, if you have LeBron and AD, because yeah. if you... If you have shooters around AD and LeBron, yeah. there's going to be so much space for AD and LeBron yeah. to operate. Yeah. But if you don't, they pack the paint because yeah. that's what Miami was doing. They're they packing pack the, the paint, paint. Yeah. whenever AD got the ball. It was sort of like a pack line but it defense. it's hard to guard because everyone plays small ball and then they have AD, LeBron playing point basically. Then they have AD, they have Dwight Howard and JaVel McGee barely played, but they have three seven mm, footers right. and LeBron playing the point. They're so big, so it's like it was really hard for like small ball teams to guard them. Exactly, like right? Or, or Miami or anything. I think. Well, the thing was in the game six of the finals. I mean, it's a small sample size, but they put Caruso in as starting yeah. in the starting lineup yeah. instead of Dwight to go small. Yeah, to go small and like stretch out the defense. Clearly works. You yeah. know, Caruso can hit that open jumper. Yeah. Dwight cannot. So yeah. it's very it's yeah. basic. Caruso you know, drive, basketball, drive, right? Yeah. No, for sure. Yeah, I don't know. It's crazy, man. The goat, sure. LeBron. For sure. I mean, I, I won't go that far, but I mean, it's definitely like I think I think he's like the conversation's gonna be a little more exciting though. Yeah. After this, season. for sure. Yeah. He, he proved so much, and I think like I'm not about that whole like debating like these t- the they're, they're just different eras, a lot going on, and like I don't think we always have to like decide, you know, who's who's the goat because right. it's just like there's so much variables you'll never they'll never play one-on-one in their prime you never yeah, exactly. see them play five on five in their prime they all needed uh, other players and stuff right. but i think like 
appreciating what LeBron's doing because he's definitely going down history. As you're, I would two. say, I would go as much as saying you're an idiot if you think LeBron sucks and you just don't God, like him. There's so many people that say that too. I'm you know, like, it's just in the like, call him a clown and they call him soft or stuff like. And he's not a bro. top five player in that. <laughs> you know who all this time. guy like, is. Like, like, what he's as doing? soon as you say that, I don't. I just stop listening to you about basketball. I like I'm, what he said too. Like after he won this year, he's like, I wanted to show the world that you can play basketball a different way like not the way jordan was jordan was like a scorer right like mm-hmm. lebron's like he's basically a pass first player right he's like playing point and he's so his iq is so crazy high and he's getting everyone going and you know he can score but like he was basically saying like i wanted to show that you can win championships out of like like a lot of championships playing this way this brand of basketball and mm. i think that was pretty cool for him to say that you know what's so fucked yeah. think about this LeBron, without LeBron on the Lakers, the Lakers are the 2018 <laughs> Pelicans. Think about that. Yeah. How did they do? They didn't win they the did. championship. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. Dude, first round, maybe? First round, second round. I don't know. Bro, think about that. Without LeBron, they're the 2018 Pelicans. Yeah. Those Pelicans were actually better because they had Drew Holiday. He's a yeah. bucket. Yeah. So the fact that some people don't think LeBron is the best basketball player yeah. in the world or not the MVP. Yeah. It's just like, I'm it's, it's crazy to me. It's, yeah. f- he's the MVP every single year. I mean, I think he's, yeah. Like if you look at most valuable, like he might not be the most skilled, like as like a James Harden or something like, you know, crazy bad, crazy shooter, but just like value wise on a team where like every year he somehow brings his team to the finals, <laughs> like every somehow, single year, bro, somehow. he takes the Lakers one year and then one year off and then he's back at it. And it's just like, that's crazy. Like, yeah, you look at every team he's on too. like without him, how are they? They're trash, <laughs> trash. Every, every time, pretty much. Bro, when one like, of the sports <laughs> analysts mentioned that without LeBron, they're the 20 yeah, Pelicans. That, and yeah. if, it fucking hit me so hard. Yeah. I was like, wow, that is so true. Yeah, facts. You know? So, yeah. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. And he, fuck, he, he's not slowing down, man. He's not. Yeah, I mean, I think he's got a few more years. That's the thing. It's like his goal. He At one point, he said his goal is to play with his son in the NBA. Yeah. With or against. But, like, I think if he's in the league, let's say he's in it three or four more years, and he can win two more, then he'll have six, like Jordan. But he'll be in the finals, like, 12 times or something dude, out yeah. of like 20 yeah. or 13 out of 20 or something. Yeah. So he'll have like the craziest, like, I feel like if he does that, that you can't really right. hate or debate. Yeah. I mean, the MJ stands are basically saying there's nothing else. He <laughs> <can't>. <laughs> they, there's, well, what they're saying is that there's literally nothing else he could do to pass MJ because of the six or the how many finals losses he has. So yeah. if he wins like three, two or three more championships, it doesn't even matter at this point because he's lost six or seven. That's silly though. That's, that's, silly. Silly. that's, silly. that's just fine. I just find that stupid because every time it's like he, if you, it's better to make it to the finals 12 times than make it to the finals six times. Right. Like, you know what I mean? Like some of the times he made it to the finals, he was playing against one of the greatest teams ever. Exactly. Assembled, yeah. Like a few times. So right. one time he beat them. So right. it's like, so it's, it, I feel like that, that whole thing's kind of like, the fact they made it to the finals some of the time was like, right. wow, that's crazy. And the only championship and only finals that he was basically favored in was the Dallas Mavericks one where he choked out. Yeah. That was, uh, that was uh, I'll that yeah. give him that. I'll, that's a little notch. Yeah, his first year in Miami, he could have won. Yeah. Sure. But every and other- then another year, though, against the Spurs, like his Miami team was solid. Like they could have won against the Spurs. Right. Yeah. Like they but, barely beat the Spurs. Yeah. Yeah. He said, okay, I read Ray Allen's book and, uh, Ray Allen's talking, I think at the beginning about that shot he hit or whatever. And after the game, uh, LeBron's in the locker room with him. being like, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Cause like Jesus. Jesus shot shot shot. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> it was so funny. Yeah. I don't know. Like a lot of people also with that, it's like, they're like, oh, Ray Allen saved his legacy. Well, LeBron was the reason why they were in that position in the first place with that three he hit right before. Uh-huh. So people don't understand, like people don't like read into that. They don't like go back. Okay, well, how did they get to that moment? Like, you know, if, without LeBron, yeah. he they wouldn't have the opportunity for Ray Allen to of hit course. that shot. And LeBron, I think, hit a three like just before that. Yeah, that's what I mean. That's <laughs> the three I'm talking about. Yeah. So it's LeBron like hit a three and then like, missed one and then Ray Allen. Hit yeah. One. I think people like skip Bayless. I think it's like at this point in their careers, like in their like broadcasting careers and 
it's just they've stuck to one thing that they're a LeBron hater, yeah. that he's a LeBron hater, and he's just going to go on t- with that until the day he dies. I mean, I feel like if he wanted to switch it up now, he almost can't. Because he'll, like, he'll be changing his stance. Yeah, so his much. brand. You know what I mean? Because it's, like it's a brand, brand at this yeah. point. You know what I mean? Like Skip Bayless, LeBron know, hater. The whole media. That's why, like, I don't watch the news and stuff. Like, and like media in general. Like, it's beautiful now because of you know social media and just like stuff like this, like podcasts. Like, you can hear from NBA players they're hosting their own podcast. Mm. So I'd way rather listen to a dude who's been there, done it, than you know Skip or any of these analysts talk about NBA players when they don't even play basketball right. and they're just literally they're hating just because they know it's going to get views for their company. Like that's like, it's probably a facade. Like he probably doesn't go home and he's just a dick all the time. He probably yeah, goes home yeah. and he's like, fuck, this is exhausting. Fuck, he might <laughs> even think thing. LeBron's like, go, we don't know. Like, <laughs> but just deep down, like deep down he does, he thinks that. Yeah, like, exactly. But just like for the show and like for the views exactly. and stuff like that, clickbait. I, just, like, I mean, I, th- I just feel like I, I, what do you, I don't know. I hate hate, you know? <laughs> yeah, man. It's it's uh it's fun to watch though. It's this like one thing I realized yeah. with like, you know, sports not being here for like, because of COVID and stuff, I just life just got so much more boring, you know what I mean? Because yeah. like diff- like there wasn't like different storylines, what's LeBron doing, how is this going on? Yeah. You know, will LeBron choke or like, yeah. you know Yeah, it keeps people interested. Yeah, man. That's like it's essential, bro. Sports, like you need that in, there in your life. Yeah, I feel like it's it's like a it's like kind of testing people's mental, like strength. You know what I mean? Like just the whole si- pandemic situation, yeah. lockdown, stuff like that. It's like you can you can take it a bunch of different ways. But like I think for me personally, like I've gotten before that before it happened though, I I just started working more on like my mental game, like in a mm. sense, like 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 you know how like you work out your your muscles in your body you like go to the gym you work out all the time you do this and that for your body but people don't think of like your muscle or your brain as a muscle mm. you know what i mean so like the most important muscle probably the most important muscle yeah, and we easy. never get taught how to work it out mm, you know what yeah. I mean? we never get taught anything in school about how your brain needs like you know attention and stuff like right. that and i think like for me that's come in the form of like just reading meditation stuff like that like mindfulness stuff sleeping properly and um that's been like so huge during this whole thing like i'm realizing like not everyone's gone through stuff that like i've kind of like uh trained my my mind to to do Mm. and i feel like it's helped me so much through these times like because i can i can still kind of remain solid Mm. no matter what hopefully that's crazy (laughs) because i just think i mean for me personally meditation and mindfulness doesn't work for me because my thoughts and my mind are running so fast and there's a bunch of different things coming in at once that i can't get myself to um because for my because what mindfulness and meditation really is you is you identify with these with these thoughts and you kind of take a step back and look at these thoughts and what you're thinking of but i just can't do that because there's so many of those i like those thoughts coming in yeah. so for me what i found out is reading yeah really takes me out of my own head and puts me into the external world and yeah. really um just be, make makes me more mindful yeah, yeah, yeah. so for me it's reading and uh a lot of people it could be meditation and stuff like that. Yeah. So, okay, you're tell me about your basketball story and uh, with your training and like stuff like that. When you train kids, mentor kids, what do you? What philosophy do you bring to that? And um, it's it's basically you know it's a, there's a direct correlation to what you value you know as yeah. a person and what you bring to these kids. So. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, just, like, expand on that a little bit, I don't know. No, I think, like, the, kind of, like, the reason I got into training and coaching is, like, trying to be the person that I wished I had when I was growing up, Mm. because I grew up on this little island, and basketball wasn't, like, a focus point there. People were pretty into soccer on Salt Spring Island, about 10,000 people, so the high school is, like, maybe 600 people. It's not tiny, but we had all the other Gulf Islands came to our island for for school and 
we just weren't known as a basketball school. And then when you tried to play college, it's like tough because college coaches are looking at kids from the city, even like the, the, the colleges in, you know, Victoria and Nanaimo that are close They're They're looking at kids from like Victoria and Nanaimo, you know what I mean? And then schools in Vancouver or anywhere on the mainland are looking at kids from the mainland. So like when I was in high school, we had no exposure no one knew who we were, but we were starting to beat every team in the province. We were like ranked top five in the province in, in grade 12. We had a really good squad and we choked and we didn't make provincials mm-hmm. when I was in grade 12. So like that year, I think because we didn't make provincials, we didn't get the exposure that I think would have helped me a lot to, to play at the next level and stuff like that. So I think like that's, that's it's definitely like a big part of why I kind of stayed with basketball is because of like, just you know remembering how much it hurt when I lost in grade 12 and just knowing how badly like I wanted it when I was that age and then kind of relating to kids now because I know kind of what they're going through and then also I've done a lot of work as like a youth worker so like Mm. I think a lot of coaches like they don't take uh you know the time to get to know the kids that Mm. well some do and some don't so I think like for me it's just a matter of like okay how can I help these kids? Like a lot of them aren't going to go to the NBA. You know what I mean? Like from BC, how many kids have gone to the NBA? I'm not trying to like crush anyone's dreams. I'm just saying as, as your coach and as your trainer or whatever, I think it's my job to help you in other ways. Like how can I help you in life? Like how can I get to, and you can't help someone just by being like, this is what you should do in life. Mm -hmm. You have to like, get to know them you have to listen to them right. ask them questions and and stuff like and that and i've noticed i in like your videos and your instagram posts you um you, you talked about kids like yo you can like text me or hit me up if yeah, something's up with, for like, sure not just about basketball just like life if you need help with anything yeah. like you know if you're yeah. going through something and i think that's like to connect on a kid on that level is just like they know that they have support and yeah um, you know, someone yeah. that's like looking out for them. It yeah. just, you know, I think a lot of kids just want to be heard. Like a lot of, you know, you get taught teachers are just kind of talking to you. Coaches are just telling you what to do and, and all that. And like, I, I'm not saying like I do it enough or all the time or anything, but I know that's like what got me into it. That's what, what I wanted to bring to, to kids. Like I wanted to be there for them, help them through whatever, you know, they need help with and kids know they can, they can hit me up and right. you know, I've had, these types of conversations with kids where they ask me questions, but like about, you know, what should they do with their career in basketball or what should they do in different circumstances in life? Um, but yeah, I kind of forgot. Right. I mean, it's, it's weird, man, because at some point you got to be real with yourself about, um, your expectations and what you can achieve as a player. Um, for me, I don't know why, growing up I always I wanted to make the NBA obviously and that dream stayed alive until fucking I don't know like grade 10 which is pretty late for a lot of guys you know what I mean yeah and the first time I realized that I have absolutely (laughs) zero (laughs) chances when we went down to the states yeah it was like a local tournament not even like downtown like Seattle was like a like a random town before Seattle and (laughs) <laughs> we absolutely got like annihilated yeah. and it's just in that moment I was like okay so yeah, no this is what I because at some point man <laughs> it's about it's about your intangibles your height yeah. your weight your yeah. athleticism because you know what I mean yeah and like you said like I would never crush a kid's dream yeah. and tell them I think there's exceptions to the rule like you see, like guys like Isaiah Thomas, or although he could fucking jump so high, bro, he's going. an athlete, <laughs> bro. His, his mixtapes where you see like him just doing like windmills and stuff, but like you know, you get guys just wanted a guys in the league, dozen, you know, that you know, there's being guys in the league that are five three and and five five and five seven, five eight, five nine, and stuff like that. So it's like it's doable, it's possible. I think for anyone, in a sense, like you look at Steve Nash, he's not like the craziest athlete. He's just so high basketball IQ and his skills are there. It's like, but at a certain point, if you're in grade 10 or 11 and you haven't, you know, gotten to that level, then it's bleak. And I was the same way, like in grade 10 or 11, I think, I think we went to, we went to a basketball camp in Gonzaga 
yeah. for, a, for a summer camp with our basketball team. And like we saw Adam Morrison was, was on Gonzaga then. Yeah. And we saw them play uh, scrimmage. And they were like refing our games and stuff. And, and we got to watch them scrimmage. And they were just so good. And I was just like, wow, there's no way I'm making like the NBA. Like I th- really thought I was going to go to the NBA. Like that's <laughs> really like all my life. I, when I was little, like I, the first time I think I watched basketball, I watched um, Gary Payton, Sonics versus the, versus the Bulls in the yeah. finals on like a little TV, like probably a bad, like whatever. We didn't have cable and all that. So like, we, but we got the game and I just remember being obsessed with Gary Payton. And ever since then, every time you write, like, what are you going to do when you grow up? I would be like, oh, NBA player. Like, obviously, yeah, yeah. I'm going to the NBA. Like, I didn't, like, think about it. Like, and one time my older brother was like, you know, like, you can't just go to the NBA. <laughs> it's not like a job you just apply for. Right. He was like, you have to become a, you have to work on your game and stuff. But, like, he didn't really understand what that meant. And I definitely didn't. And I never had anyone, like, telling me, like, this is what you have to do to, like, get to the next level. And, like, even if it wasn't the NBA, like, for me it's like when I was 25 or 25, yeah, I, I started working on my game like seriously. Whereas like up until that point and back then we didn't have like YouTube and Instagram trainers showing you like how to do stuff. You, we, I didn't have anyone telling me like, this is what you got to do to get to the college level even. So right. like in my head it was like MBA. And then at some point I was like, okay, that's not happening. Maybe college, right. maybe like right. I want to do it, but I didn't know like how. And from age 25 to like 26, just like one year of like dedicated work on my skills, uh, I remember I, w- I, I made cap as a red shirt and, and then Dwayne hit me up and he was like, yo, like if you want to train, like hit me up. And so I started training with him and that like, there was just like one little thing, little detail he gave me about like, do your crossover, like a little, like get low when you cross, like literally I would cross and just be up here and whatever. And like that little detail, like just getting low and like using my shortness to my advantage by like getting low when I drive and cross over and do everything. That little thing, like I never thought about it. And it just like took my game like to, to another level, I think. And like, I just started like improving so fast. And I was like, man, if I was 16 or or 12, you know what I mean? Putting Mm. in this kind of work, my game would be, way better Mm. you know what i mean but in that time like i definitely like improved a a lot i think also a lot of kids uh here's the thing there's two different approaches when it comes to playing basketball and how you train and um, what it means to really love the game i talked to diego about it a little bit but like the kids that you coach and the kids that you have and you know come train with you and you know work on their skills and stuff is it from a place where they really l- love the game and they really want to get to the next level? Because here's the thing, man. Yeah. Like a lot of how, here's how I'll say it. I've talked to a lot of kids that I've coached, and I've said, "Okay, what are your goals with basketball?" And yeah. they give me a you know a pretty decent answer. They say, "Well, I want to play. Po- I definitely want to play after high school. Yeah. I want to see where that goes. I want to get." I want to get a you know good education, maybe go pro, and yeah. um, I definitely want to play. So there, the general consensus with all of them is that they want to play post secondary. Okay, yeah. so I tell them when we go down. Okay, when we go down to the states and we play guys from like you know just like you know the club teams down there and like you know the inner city kids. They play basketball. They want to make it to post-secondary because they almost want to like yeah. provide for their family. Yeah. It's like life or death. It's a life. It's literally life or death yeah. for them. Some for some of them. Yeah. Fact. So if you're like you're already at like a disadvantage mentally when you yeah. go up against someone like that. Yeah. Because you're playing because you love the game and because you just you love to, yeah. you watch it you think it's fun you know you get to play with your friends you get a you know a feeling of satisfaction and confidence when you do well yeah but these kids play because they want to get out of wherever they wherever they're from and they want to like you know improve their lives you're not trying to improve your life you're trying to yeah you know yeah for sure so when i tell them that and they're like oh okay well that yeah that makes sense you know and I think that's a big thing with like kids of like you know who, like yeah. where we coach and yeah. where they're from. Yeah, it's, and it's, it's not tough. their issue; it's just no. their environment. It's just the environment. I think the culture is like that. That 
that culture in the states of especially from like the inner city or whatever like they they have that culture because they know this is their only way out or whatever mm. and they've seen someone from their community some of the time they've seen someone make it you know one guy and then there's like so many others that that don't make it um there's this book i think it's called the last shot it's about like coney island like grade 12 uh there's like they follow three grade 12s for the year and show like kind of their their process of like trying to make it to d1 schools and a lot of them can't get the grades or or one of them works his ass off but he can't get the grades uh, on the SATs and then Stefan Marbury is in grade eight and he's like one of the people they follow in this story. Mm. So they show this cocky grade eight Stefan Marbury kid. It's a book. So they're writing about him, but it's so interesting because you kind of see like how rare it is. Like Stefan Marbury had like five older brothers that didn't make it. That were all nice. That all like could hoop at a really high level. And he was their last chance, like in a family of like six boys Whoa, or some yeah. shit like that. I'm not entirely sure uh, the exact family dynamic, but like he, he was their last chance kind of thing and he made it and everything and it, it worked out, but it's like, there's so many kids that don't make it. And one of the mm. kids who didn't make it like committed suicide like a few years wow. later because he was just so fed up. He, he played Juco cause he couldn't get the grades and then he just like couldn't make it. But I think here it's like the, the culture around the game is good. It's always different because you don't have that, that, you know, do or die mentality. It's like, mm. oh, I could play basketball in college or I could do something get else. A good I could education go to another else. school. I could get a scholarship here. Or I could get, I don't know, like whatever. It depends on people's situations. Not saying like everyone here has money, but like um, people here have a lot of choices. You mm. know what I mean? And they might not even realize that they have those choices mm. because when you grow up, it's like you don't, you can't blame the kids for their situation. They're just like, they're just a product of their environment or whatever. You know what I mean? So I think like as a coach or whatever, your, your job is to kind of teach them, okay, how are you going to, how are you going to create in your head what you want to create for your life? Like mm. if you like a Steve Nash, you can give, I give him as an example a lot because he came from, you know, Victoria and all that. And he wasn't like the most athletic guy and he made it. So it's like, you get some small amount of people that had that mindset like his his competitive nature was the same or higher than a lot of the guys in the states right that's why he got to where he got mm. i think so i think like here it's just a matter of like kind of teaching that mindset but at the same time like you talked about just love of the game and i think nowadays it's like it's hard because people kids grow up playing basketball and as soon as they start playing basketball there's like all these like money stuff going on around it so like if you want to play at a high level you play on a club you know what i mean and you mm -hmm. pay for the club and then you have coaches coaching you all the time so like you you play high school basketball or school basketball or whatever with a coach and then you go play club all summer all whatever or you hire a trainer or whatever the case is you're always being told like what to do and like how to play and different things whereas like the love of the game for me and you probably i don't know about you but for me it's like that love came from like just playing on the street with my friends all the time like mm -hmm. every day at recess every day at lunch every day after school we're outside we're hooping and and we're loving the game but i didn't get like the skills training part that i needed mm -hmm. i just got the game play fun part a lot of kids now i feel like they get the skills but then when they get thrown in a game they're not that good yeah. And then they also don't, be a bit of both, a they don't of love it enough to like go through the hell. Mm, like there's a yeah. lot of, there's a lot of things that happen in basketball when you get to higher levels that when you're in high school, you don't realize like you, you think like, oh, I'm going to play college and that's going to be awesome, fun experience. Cause you see people with that. But then there's also a lot of college players and coaches that it's not like all rosy. Like you're getting shit on by the coach all the time, or mm. you're getting like, you're not getting like the minutes you want or getting on this, this, the, like the, the, the kind of same position you want as you were in high school. Mm. And you're going to go through these different like ups and downs with the game. And if you don't really like love the game, you know, a lot and you're not willing to like put in the work by yourself and all that, it's like, you're probably not going to go that mm. far with it. So it's, it's definitely like a lot going on with that. Mm. I think like mentally. That's so true. Damn. <laughs> That's deep, man. I think just you got to like really be honest with yourself and ask yourself if you really love the game. Yeah. If you love the game to the point where you're willing to fight for it yeah. and do whatever you can, even yeah. when shit goes haywire. Yeah. And I think some people can have different motivators. Like you could 
do it because you need to get out of the hood or you could do it because you know you've always been laughed at or something like that like for me it was more of a, like a respect thing i think i i always just had this thing i wanted to prove and then there's other things like you know like uh it helped me get out of like a dark space mentally like it helped me get out of depression and stuff like that the mm -hmm. game like really helped me so like i i use that as like a motivating factor knowing like if i stop playing basketball i might go back to that depression or something um but also like like whatever your you know what i mean whatever your motivator is it's kind of mm. like you got to have like a reason whether it's just pure love of the game or whether it's like wanting to like change some sort of circumstance or prove something to yourself or to the world or whatever to coaches it's like those those motivators like lebron even said it like what did he say like he he uh all these hate he gets like he used that as like he was like yeah i don't really care like it doesn't bother me mm. but it helps me because i'll just kind of use that as added motivation mm. i mean you're 17 like you know what i mean like i i'm doing a lot yeah. but i still need little things to set me off and jordan used to have mm. that too like little because things that would set him off at some point the game itself kind of the the game itself diminishes in terms of the fuel it's like just the game itself so you look for different things to get you to feel you to perform at a higher level yeah you know what i mean you look for shit for people to yeah you know talk shit about yeah. you or um doubt your yeah. uh, game or whatever yeah. to help you perform because at some point because you know year 17 he's proven everything he's yeah. accomplished everything so he like needs he to, to find be, something yeah he needs to look for yeah. something like kobe's exactly like, you know he what had I mean? like that i think he had an all-star game where george carl like didn't play him or something. something like and that then he's man. like he didn't play him in the fourth quarter and him and michael were like him and mj were going at each other and right then, and then he held on to that and he was like anytime i play george carl during the season anytime i'm giving it to him like yeah, every exactly and he, just started, I mean? he killed him he's like his team will never beat me in a playoff series and it's like <laughs> well they probably went to beat you anyways but yeah. he used these like little things little and he things. remembered them and it was just so competitive and it's like you, you got to have a why you got to have a reason why right. or else it's gonna it's just too hard like it's not easy to fucking grind like three times a day oh, every no, single not. day like most people just want to chill because at some <laughs> at some point you're gonna burn out and you're gonna say to yourself why am i playing basketball Thanks. like you can <laughs> put the ball in hoop for so long and for so much you know so you gotta f find something an external source of like motivation fuck yeah. a, a girl rejects you yeah you go that's to the gym fun. and you say fuck you i'm giving you 40 that's what's up. my this girl you know what i mean I just like something you, yeah. to get yeah. you going you know yeah. and i've actually had that yeah. that's my same experience. bro same <laughs> i got i got <laughs> totally lie. turned down the day before and i was just pissed yeah and the next day i just went off on these guys and, was, and they're like why are you so pissed off i'm like bro it was like an open run or was it, it was like just like an open run yeah. i don't know where it was but i remember the I night remember, before yeah. Got my heart broken and yeah, bro. the next day. Man, that shit as helps crazy as like, it sounds, it is what it no, is. <laughs> I, I've had that too, bro. Like, I had a bad break. That's kind of what started my whole, like, journey back into basketball, I think. But, like, you know, when I'd be at the gym, I'd be thinking about that. You know what I mean? I'd be, like, running on the treadmill, like, up, like, the fucking treadmill mountain or yeah. whatever. Like, I used to do crazy shit in the gym to, like, push myself. Um, but th that was, like, in the back of my head. I was like thinking about like how much I was mad about that situation and that fueled me. And I never thought about it until like later on, like in life, like I started to think back of like what like made me like, I still like want to prove something in basketball. Like I still like feel shitty if I don't like go up and get shots up or put in work. I, mm. I feel like this part of me that still wants to like, hoop, and I'm trying to like shut it down a little bit because I'm like, you know, getting older i have a kid and like i, I need to like do other things in life <laughs> but like or just like focus on training but but at the same time it's like those little those things like have have definitely like uh stuck with me mm. you know what i mean you can like transfer that over into yeah other parts of your life you for know? sure i think like that energy that basketball players have if you're if you put in like a ton of work in your game when you go on to do something else if you can just take that and transfer it into business or podcast or whatever you're doing and like put your all into something like it's such a 
that's what the, the life skill of basketball comes right. in, right? Like, you can yeah. transfer that energy. And that's what Kobe said about, like, I actually saw in an interview he did. It was, like, a little clip on Instagram when he was talking about the mama mentality. It's, yeah. He was basically saying, don't look at my goals. Don't look at my end results. Yeah. Look at how I got there, yeah, the, process. the process. And he talked about, you know, you could be a coder. You could be, a, yeah. you know, an engineer, a writer, or yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. It's the same process for any discipline. Facts. You know? So yeah. for me, like, even with podcasting, I've been yeah. looking at different podcasts yeah. and how, um, you know, the hosts, yeah, you know, exactly. talk to their guests, exactly. what kind of topics they go yeah. through, their mannerisms, yeah. the tone of voice. I'm Put looking at all these things yeah. right now, you know? So... It's just, and that really, you know, occurred to me that, damn, I am taking yeah. my, like, the things I've learned in basketball, the little, yeah. you know, attention to detail. Exactly. To whatever, like podcasting or yeah. writing or. Because, like, you could just show up, like, let's say a basketball game. You could just show up and hoop. Some people are still nice because they don't, like, they just show up and hoop mm. or whatever. But most people need to kind of work on their shit, work on their game. And then they get to the game and they play better. Whereas like for a podcast, like you, you could just show up and talk and leave your boy just edits. It's all good. You never think about it again until the next time you do it. But you're, you're thinking like, okay, how can I put in the work to be the best at this? You know what I mean? Like right. no matter what you do, it's like, you can, you can think of that, uh, the same way you mm. do ball, I think. And that's the thing with like this podcast thing. I hate listening to myself. I oh, hate yeah. re-listening or like watching myself again. So that's one thing I have to get over. I have to like look at myself Facts. and listen to myself. Okay, where? Yeah. Well, what could I have said different? Yeah. You know, what? Yeah. Um, sort of direction should I have taken this combo? You know what I'm saying? For so sure. there's in every discipline, any discipline you, anyone chooses to do. I think in the social media world, you just have to get, you have to get used to that. Like. I, you know what I mean? Like it took me a while to get used to watching myself. I, I, I try not to like talk too much. I don't like to watch myself like talking too much. Like I don't yeah. like hold the phone and go like, hey guys. Yeah, like, oh yeah, that's But cringe. like at the same time, it's like people that succeed on social media do that. I don't want to do like social media as like my main thing, but I'm just saying like you kind of got to get used to that. Yeah. But the other thing is like the process of like anything you do. I'm reading a lot about like habits, like this book called Atomic Habits. Have you heard of this? No, it's I like haven't. a pretty famous book about habits, but like he's basically saying it's not about like setting a, like you should still set a goal, but like it's more about the system you create daily. Like what what is your daily kind of system? Like what do you do each day? Mm. And most of the shit you do is like not really a choice. It's like something that you've built as a habit mm. over the years. You've kind of like you get up at the same time and you press snooze on your alarm clock because you've always do that. You just know, okay, I'm going to press snooze a couple of times or I'm going to have coffee at this time or whatever. I'm going to drink to relax or something. These are all these like habits that like you, you're not really choosing them. You're just kind of like going through the, mm. going through it because these habits have been built and you can like really like if you, if you systematically like have a good daily routine, I think for me, it's like having a good morning routine. It, it, helps you in every way in life i think su succeeding in like whatever you do i think it mm. really really helps yeah man it's crazy yes sir <laughs> shit well i mean man we've you know we've talked a lot of wisdom we've <laughs> gone through a lot of shit you're doing your thing i see you doing your thing yes sir yeah man so what like what's your next goal and like just what you're doing i mean you don't need to you know, spill all the details, but yeah. just like what you're, I mean, I'm thinking more like long-term goals and stuff like that, you know, and just trying to kind of like build stuff that whether like I, like with basketball, I want to keep it more pure. Like I want to always be doing it out of passion and not for the money and stuff. So I, I kind of, I'm trying to like build other types of things like business things to like, or just work things to like help myself financially. Like I have a kid and stuff like that. So definitely like thinking more business wise. Um, but like a long term, my goal would be to like own a, own a gym. Like that's pretty much the goal. Mm -hmm. I want to have my own gym and just like have, you know, a, like kind of like an academy and just different uh, opportunities within having your own space like you can do so much once you have a once you have a space to like really help kids and and change change uh the game mm. you know what i mean right. and all that stuff like habits and everything like i want to teach that to kids like i feel mm. like in school 
like I never learned about this stuff until I started like looking into it myself at age 30 or whatever. Like, mm. I think this is stuff that kids should at least know about and decide like if they want to like go, they should be book. aware of it. They should be aware yeah. to be even, like, even, this is a book you can read, or this mm. is like a podcast you can, or this is like a YouTube thing you can watch to like learn about how to like succeed in life. Like you right. don't, you don't learn that shit. You don't school. learn that shit in school, <laughs> man. You really don't. So I want to create more. They got to bring that into the curriculum. Even if the kid uh, isn't listening or isn't learning anything uh, and just totally slacking off, at least, you know, right, just like preaching it every day. And the kids teaching. will listen if they like have, if it's brought to them in the right way. Like if you just like mm. got to school and decided these are a few YouTube channels we're going to let the kids watch, the kids are going to be way more into that than fucking reading a textbook about mm. some stuff that you'll never use in life. You know what I mean? Like there's so many YouTube channels that actually help people. It's crazy. I swear there's some, some teachers probably like, there, but I some swear some us. teachers like see their like curriculum and like the criteria that they have to teach and they're like, what the fuck <laughs> are we teaching these kids? Even yeah. the teachers themselves are like, wow, these they're not going to learn anything from this. They don't even need to know this. I'm just, yeah, for sure. They're I like, swear to God, some teachers have to be thinking that. It's got to be. It's got to be, like be an, fuck. an old system. Like I don't think just, they've updated it enough. I don't know, man. But it is what it is. And, uh, man, I just want to say thank you for coming in. You're, you're a big homie, man. And you're a, lot, you're a mentor to a lot of people and a lot of kids in the in the North Van area and the basketball community. So love what you're doing, you know, Thanks, you're doing your thing. Thanks. Thank you for coming in. Let's do the fucking appreciate it. Mm. Enjoy your 24. This is episode four with coach Yoni. We're out. Appreciate you, bro. Peace. Peace. Thanks. Let's go. Sweet. <sighs> nice, you. Bro. Nice. That was dope. That was dope.